Hi, I'm Vic and welcome to Geeko Farm, where we do things differently. Last time we were looking at this cunning plan for cooling our hydroponics water. We picked a nozzle which made a decent spray and now we're going to have a look and see whether we can actually get some cooling by evaporating the water and maybe try a little bit of practical experiments behind the greenhouse to see if it actually works. Experiment two. How much cooling are we going to get? Well, this is the old wet bulb, dry bulb thermometer thing, if you've not seen it. That's a thermometer probe just sitting in here. That's a thermometer probe with wet paper on it. I've left that paper and the water sitting there for a while, so it's at more or less room temperature. It does seem to be a little bit cooler. Um, this lead here, as you can see, follow it there, that goes to the one that's in the water. And that's because some water is evaporating. Our air temperature is 22, our cold probe temperature is 20, um, and we'll turn the fan on. This may get noisy because there's a fan. Okay. So the water evaporates. As it does so, it takes some of the energy out of the water with it. Um, after a while, this will cool down the probe. It's got a bit of mass in there. You'll notice that the temperature of the other probe doesn't actually change at all because nothing's evaporating and it's blowing air over it at room temperature. The actual temperature drop that we get depends on how much humidity there is in the air because that's what stops the water evaporating from the, well in this case, paper towel. Same thing will happen with our air droplets later on. All right, well I'm seeing about a, a three degree difference in temperature. Oh no, we've got a four degree difference in temperature. I'll leave this running and do the old uh, cut and start again routine. And as you can see, I've moved the fan a bit closer to see if increasing the speed of the airflow helps, and it really doesn't. Uh, we are looking at a four degree temperature drop. Now remember, this is ambient room temperature. Our water in the hydroponic system is going to be warm. So we'll rejig this thing and do a similar experiment with warm water. Might as well make a cup of then. Alrighty, rejigged a bit. This is now measuring the temperature of the glass of warm water. And this is still measuring the temperature of the damp probe, which is cooling down a bit. Uh, 37 degrees, that water. 30 degrees with a little bit of evaporative cooling. Okay, now, um, by the way, I've recorded 40 degrees in the hydroponic tub. Ignore the 75 and 60 there, that's just the way I like to heat my meat. Okay, will you start the fans please? See what kind of drop we get this time. As you can see, the temperature is falling quite markedly. Now notice that that little wick is sitting there in the water quite close to uh, the surface actually so that probe is, is actually sucking warm water up and Vigora, it's actually cooling it there we go demonstration of evaporative cooling in action I'll leave this to run for a while so we've now got the temperature down to 19 degrees, um, the temperature in the glass has actually dropped to 32, uh, but this is showing that we do get a fair amount of evaporative cooling. Let's go and crunch some numbers. I've measured the water flow on that little spray and it puts out a quarter of a litre per minute. I'm going to put two of them in the bin, that's half a litre of, of water a minute roughly. The tank that we use in the hydroponic system is roughly 50 litres. So half a litre a minute, that's going to take 100 minutes for me to cycle the tank through the cooling system. Normally during the day I have the thermostat
fan thing in there set to go at 32 degrees Celsius. So as soon as the tank reaches that temperature, the fan turns on. It will reach 40, given uh, no fan at all, and it'll do that within four hours. But because I can cycle the whole tank in less than two hours, I think we're going to have adequate cooling. Experiment number three. Um, I'm going to have to take these glasses off and squint because I can't actually read the temperature probe through them. I needed a container that had very little sort of mass to it. So I've used some glad wrap. What we're going to do is we're going to spray water through the air, measure the temperature of it once it's fallen through the air onto the glad wrap. Then we'll know whether we stand a hope in hell of cooling our greenhouse this way. Poking out of the uh, window of the greenhouse, we have here one of these sprays. We were playing with those the other day. And there's a load of water spraying all over me. And uh, some of it is going to spray into that container. Lovely. It's like I'm entering a wet t-shirt contest. Anyway. I reckon we've got a good amount of water there. Let's turn it off and not be wet. Okay, here's my thermo probe. I put it in the liquid and give it some time to adjust. And it says it's at... Oh, it's about 27 degrees Celsius. Yeah, to make it all really scientific, there's the air temperature outside. Yeah, 25 and a little bit. Here inside the greenhouse, where I don't have to squint, we will play the water stream over the end of the probe, cooling it to, or heating it up to whatever the temperature of the water is inside the greenhouse. And look at that. Our TP101 temperature probe says that the water coming out of the jet was at 31.8 degrees. That's quite a bit of cooling we've got in there. Well, looks like I've got something to get on with for the next few episodes. But let's look at another problem. You've bought some plants. And you're going to plant them out in a little while. Um, but, you know, while you're waiting, you want to put them in some water. But if you put them in, like, a big tray of water and leave them soaked in the water, you'll waterlog them and they die. If you put them in the greenhouse in a tray with only a little bit of water and you forget to water them, they die. Are we spotting a familiar theme here? Now, what we have devised is a tray which is fed from this tube here, but only every four hours for a little while. So I can put my plants in here and then the water will come in and drain away again. My plants get water, but they don't get waterlogged. Let me show you how it works. It's quite simple, really. We've just got an Arduino down there, uh, which counts four hours, turns the pump on for about a minute, and then turns it off and counts another four hours, and it'll just keep on doing that. Very simple code. We've got the little microcontroller there in the middle, we have a relay board there, which actually turns the 12 volts on and off for the little motor. And a display down the bottom, which has nothing to do with this, that's to do with those pumps. And there it goes, filling up the tray with water. See that little drain hole in the bottom there? That will eventually drain the tray, but as you see, it fills up a bit first. Here we go. Thank you, dog. All the plants are fed and watered and at the right temperature. And I've got a few more bits of planting to do. But other than that, for now, I think that's your lot down on Geeko Farm. You want tea as well? Yeah.